but if they would take time to listen to what we saying. We're not being mean, but we're trying to help them along the way, hoping they come live to get our age. Some of them won't because of the things they are doing. But I wish they would listen to us. And I also wish the young people would try to get all the education they can. And then you have so many don't know what church is or what God is. And that's the most important thing. But their parents don't go to no churches. Don't know what church is because their parents didn't go to church. So what is it? But if they were just listening. Now you have so many out there do listen. And that's why they are where they are today. Because they listened and they wanted to learn and they didn't want to be in the pitfall their parents were in. So I want to do better with my life. And I admire those young people that listen and want to do better. And I pray that some more come along and listen and improve that life. You don't have to be down all your life, but it's up to you to have the ability to move up. You look back at your parents, they didn't do anything. Mama didn't do anything to have babies. I don't want to have babies. Daddy sold drugs or he drunk all the time, you know. So I just admire them and I hope and trust that more listen to what the elders have to say. If you believe you can do something and you work at it long enough and hard enough, and I want to lead that. I want other. I want these young people to know that. You know, there are opportunities here for you that I didn't have. I didn't have, but I wanted you to have. I march. I love Dr. King. I believed in what he was doing. I felt when he said all of those things about, you know, justice and respect. And we have a right to do it. And we help make it, you know. And I look at, you know, just what? Two days ago, Miss Height passed away in Dorothy Height. And last week or the week before, Benjamin Hook passed away. And I look at our generation. Somebody got to keep doing this. Somebody got to keep believing that it's about this world that's not as big a world anymore, but this world that we all got to live in. And we got to try to make it better so that foundation is built. But there's still more that needs to be added on. It's not going to stop. Chronology of significant events for African Americans in DeKalb County. 1823, the city of Decatur is chartered. 1830, there are 17 free African Americans in DeKalb County. Roderick D. Badger, an African American, is born in DeKalb County. He is trained in the field of dentistry and works as an itinerant dentist traveling from county to county. In 1856, he moves from the Panthersville District of DeKalb to Atlanta, becoming the first African American dentist in Atlanta. During the Civil War, Dr. Badger served as an aide to the Confederate Army Colonel. He died on December 27, 1890, and is buried in Atlanta's Oakland Cemetery. 1839, the first Baptist church, originally known as Rock Mountain Baptist Church, is formed. By 1867, both whites and African Americans are members. 1868, Antioch AME, church is organized in the home of Sister Lou Bratcher, 
on what is now Electric Avenue. In 1874, a one-room structure was built on Herring Street, now Trinity Avenue. Later, the church was relocated to Marshall and Cooper Streets. It is now located on Atlanta Avenue. Bethesda Baptist Church is organized. One of its early pastors, Reverend F.M. Simmons, and other African-American ministers meet with General William Tecumseh Sherman in Washington, D.C. at the close of the Civil War to discuss treatment of freedmen. 1901, Scott Dell Mill is opened by founder Colonel George Washington Scott, who built the mill on a cotton field. He also built mill houses and rented them for 25 cents a room. 1903, Frank H. Porter acquires property and 50 acres of land located at Covington and Kensington Roads for $1,000. This property was the ancestral home of Joseph Walker, a southern plantation owner. Mr. Porter moves his furniture, chickens, and farm tools by mule, while his children walk driving the cows. 1909, after graduating from Leonard Medical College, Ross S. Duthard moves to Decatur. He establishes his medical office at a house located on the corner of Marshall and Atlanta Avenue, becoming the first African-American physician in Decatur. 1913, Mother Hannah Burnett organizes the Lily Hill Baptist Church in her home on East Lake Drive. Later, the church is moved to a tent on Electric Avenue and Robbing Street. Finally, it is settled at Spring House on Atlanta Avenue and Waters Street. Herring Street School is built for African Americans in Decatur. 1932, Professor Charles Clayton, a 1914 graduate of Morehouse College, begins his tenure as principal of Herring Street School which served as elementary and high school for African Americans. He later receives his law degree and practices law. 1933, the Bryant family of Philadelphia becomes the first African American family to move into the Cates Estates, later renamed Linwood Park. 1941, a 200-unit public housing development for African Americans is built in the Beacon Hill community of the city of Decatur. Cox Brothers Funeral Home, founded in Atlanta in 1900, opens a Decatur location on Marshall Street. 1942, Clarence Cooper is born in the Decatur Housing Project on May 5th. In 1991, he is elected as Judge Georgia Court of Appeals. 1960, during the month of May, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., while driving in DeKalb County with author Lillian Smith, is stopped by police. He is cited for not having a Georgia's driver's license, fined $25, and placed on probation for a year. After his sit-in arrest a few months later, he is charged with violating his probation and is sentenced to four months in the DeKalb County Jail. Two churches in Decatur, Belvedere Methodist and Decatur Presbyterian set aside specific pews for African American students who should decide to visit their churches. 20% of Decatur's total population is African American, with almost all of the residents living in the Beacon Hill area. 1962, during the month of March, the Decatur DeKalb Regional Library allows African Americans to obtain books from its central library when books are not available at the Negro branch. During the month of June, the Decatur City Commission defers action on a request by Antioch AME Church to build a new church near Atlanta Avenue, an area which divided the African American and white sections. 1964, during the month of March, the Decatur Housing Authority receives $1.8 million in federal monies as part of the Beacon Hill urban renewal project. The money is earmarked to purchase and clear 16 acres of the blighted residential area in an effort to make way for a new Decatur High School. During the month of June, Willard Strickland and R.A. Knight, two former Atlanta police officers, become the first African-American policemen in Decatur. They are selected from a pool of 10 applicants. 1965, 
Richard Wilson, the 11th grade son of future Mayor Elizabeth Wilson, and 26 other students integrate Decatur High School. The first African American student, Gay Johnson McDougall, enrolled at Agnes Scott. After two years, however, she transferred to another college. 1966, James Dean is the first African American legislator elected from DeKalb County as the representative of the 76th district. 1967, during the month of November, the College Heights Elementary School organizes a biracial parent-teacher association. Mrs. Clifford Wilson is president. DeKalb County opens a new 10-story, 142,000 square foot courthouse on land once occupied by African Americans in the Beacon Hill community. Trinity High School closes and students merge with Decatur High School. Edna Lowe Swift became the second African American at Agnes Scott. She graduated in 1971, becoming the first African American to graduate from the college. 1970, Decatur sanitation workers picket and demand an hourly pay raise from $2.10 to $2.45. 1973, the Greater Travelers Rust Baptist Church that was organized in 1876 relocates to Tilson Road in Decatur. 1984, on January 7th, Elizabeth Wilson is elected DeKalb County Commissioner. 1990, Hosea Williams, a civil rights activist, is elected to the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners with 82% of the vote. 1993, Commissioner Elizabeth Wilson is elected Decatur's first African-American mayor. You know, uh, you know, I'm not a religious per person, but it's not even scripture for a man to dominate other men. The scripture tells us that, you know, uh, we, were, uh, we, were, uh, we were given dominance over the earth. But nowhere does it say that man was given dominance over other men. Each man was given dominated over uh, uh, dominion over his little section of earth. And we have no right to tell anybody to do anything. <laughs> you know, there's no universal right. I don't care what the law is. It says what man law says, but there is no universal right to dominate any other man or woman. We all were given dominion over our little part of the earth, over our personal being, you know, we can take it, you can use it well, or use it any way we want. We have a right to do well or have a right to do, you know, badly. But, you know, nobody has the right to tell anybody else what to do. Mm -hmm.